I've been trying to make this movie for the better part of 10 years, so last year this time when we were in New Jersey, uh, we started the movie on my 51st birthday. It was like fantasy camp. We got to go back to where it all began, to literally be in the same place where we were doing the same things 29 years prior, literally saying some of the same stuff. So it was uh, meta bliss. It was like a burrito that just kept folding in on itself and full of bliss. I hope when they leave Clerks 3, the audience feels like they should go home and try some stuff that they've always wanted to try in life and put it off to the side because tomorrow's never promised, so seize the day kind of thing. It is, uh, it's a movie that should make you feel creative. You should feel like you're hanging out with a bunch of old friends and then inspire you to go do something you haven't done in a long time. I remember we were composing this film by watching the first film and it was playing on HBO Max that month. So we would pull it up on, on my phone, get the frame we were trying to mimic pause it and then just hang it next to the monitor, Leron, who's our DP, would compose to that and we'd be like, Brian, move in an inch, Jeff, move over like an inch. And now it's perfect, let's go. I, I, it was so weird when we first made the movie, streaming didn't even exist. Uh, when we made the third movie, streaming saved our asses, helped us check our work every time we were doing a flashback. As long as I'm alive, there's always going to be an, a possibility there's a clerk something. Uh, so yeah, I, I wouldn't say we're, we're done quite yet, but it, it feels like a, a nice sense of closure uh, to Clerks 3. You know, it's always great about working with Kevin. It's like coming to like a summer camp or, you know, a family reunion where you know you're going to the house who makes the really good barbecue, uh, Jersey style, so to speak. So it's really great getting back together with Jeff Anderson and Jay Muse and Kevin, of course, and then bringing back some of the really great people of like Marilyn Gigliotti and Scott Schiaffo, a lot of the original people from the very first one, I mean 28 years ago for God's sakes, and we're very blessed to get them all back. If you were with us from the very beginning, from 28 years ago, and you followed us this journey where the first film was like, you know, these guys are in their 20s, they have their whole future ahead of them, they don't know what to do. The second movie was they're in their 30s, mid 30s, and going like, oh my God, my youth is going by, what am I going to do? And then this one is life is going along and then something kind of hits you that life just just hits you all at one time and how are you going to make the changes and how are you going to adjust. We're in the actual quick stop yet again that's still around 28 years. The only thing that changed in that store was adult magazine racks changed from adult magazine racks to you know weed pipes and vape pens and stuff so you could see the evolution of us as a society and technology has changed uh, in the fact that the, the store has just barely even made one adjustment. I mean, I'm excited about this. this. This is a movie made for the fans, so it's 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 going to be nice to finally have something new to talk about. We've talked about Clerks and Clerks 2 for so many years, um, and I can't wait for the, Clerk, the Clerks fans to see this, and it is an ode to them. We've done these movies like 10 and 15 years apart, so we, we keep sort of jumping into their lives at, at, at odd times in their 20s, in their 30s, and now 40s and 50s. It's uh, Finally, in his 50s, Randall has finally decided to do something with himself. This proves it's never too late. It's the most improbable thing. Like, I could picture Kevin sitting in English class with me, and I'm probably pelting him with paper. Um, and to, like, make the movie where there were six of us in the store literally working midnight to 6 a.m., thinking nobody is ever going to see this movie into this. It's very strange. I mean, it's incredible. Like with Clerks 2, we had such fun cameos coming in, and you know, we were sort of looking at each other, going, "Why are these people making our movie? It, it's very strange." Uh, but this one, like being back in the store and having just incredible people come in, it, it's really surreal. There were so many times when we were filming that we all just sort of looked at each other. Kevin, Brian, Jay, and I, we all sort of went, "What on earth is happening here?" As we're doing tonight. <laughs> Really, the fun happens off camera, and just when you know, quiet times when Kevin, you know, Brian, Jay, and I are just kind of hanging out, and a lot of it is just like being back in the store, just sort of shaking our heads, going, "Oh my God, we're back in the store!" Like 
30 years later, it seems crazy. Uh, but it's like walking into the store, I, I, I think I shed 30 years. It was like I was 20 all over again. I mean, Kevin's just one of the coolest guys and like the most genuine, like just a real good human being. And it's just a thrill when you get to work with someone like that, who's also built these worlds where, you know, so many people and so many fans care about, you know, the worlds that he has created and, and he keeps it going. And uh, for me, it's just a thrill to, to get to work with him. So I'm originally from New Jersey, so I think uh, it really, you know, Clerks and Kevin mean so much to so many New Jerseyans. And uh, so it was just a thrill for me. And especially just to go to the Jersey Shore for a little while and uh, to dance as a cow. Uh, it was a real thrill. And one of the best parts is uh, we were doing a night shoot and then they brought us a ton of really good pizza. And there's nothing like East Coast pizza, so it was a great time. He's a persistent guy, my dad, I guess. He, he, um, he just has so much love for uh, this world and these characters. Um, that I think it's just, you can tell how, how like, the love that he does have um, for these films, and um, I think that speaks to people. I think when you can tell that a filmmaker is so passionate about what they're doing, it, it just makes it even more energetic. And when we're working together, I just feel like we're working together as friends. Like. We just hang out all the time, and now we write together, like we've done a vegan podcast together called Vegan Abattoir, and so we just like to create with each other, and we're a good creative match. <laughs> um, so, I don't know, I, I'm just also proud to see him succeed as a friend, as a daughter, as a co-worker. It's a little terrifying in, in the best way possible, but I'm so like grateful that he would let me just be a part of his baby, besides Harley, <laughs> but also that too. Um, but yeah, I'm just super grateful and excited to be in the Clerks universe. So I play a character called Blockchain Coltrane, who is very much disgustingly into crypto. Uh, he started out as a very Christian kid who is, um, he is a very timid, sensitive soul who basically goes on a trajectory of trying to figure out what Satanism is, even though he never knows what it is. Um, he's Elias's best friend and pretty much doesn't know how to put his thoughts together besides just figuring out what Elias is doing. Like Jeff and Brian are just they took me to dinner the first night uh, on set and we went to get some seafood um, in Jersey and they just told me stories about growing up uh, in the town um, and just what they did in high school and about Kevin and how he was and they were just so nice and kind. The laughter. <laughs> it's like, it's not, if, if you're in a bad mood, come watch this movie and it's like, you, you know, you can't. You know. You can, it's gotta come out, yeah. Thank <laughs> you.